Hello, my friend and friends. When we're using CSS Grid with AutoFit or AutoFill, we never know how many columns of content we're gonna have at any given size, and that can make it hard to select specific rows. But as you can see here, I'm actually just selecting the first two rows, no matter how many columns I have. And we can do the same thing. We can select only the second row or only the third row or only the fourth row if you wanted to. Or we can even go backwards where we can select from the bottom. And here I'm only selecting the last row and you can do the last two rows or three rows or any sort of combination of these that you want. And to be able to do this, it takes a little bit of setup. It's not that bad, but there is a second solution that's only working with modern CSS that's actually like a few lines of CSS and it works. But we're gonna look at how we can do it right now uh, in the browser and there's a few important things uh, that are going on. We're gonna start simple and sort of build up as we go through here, but I am using a container query. So my main grid, if we come and take a look here, I have my grid set up. The main grid is a container and that is important with how I'm gonna be doing this. The next thing that we're gonna see here is that I'm using a grid template columns with my repeat with my auto fit right here. And I've set this up with a min of 200 pixels and a max of 1FR. The 1FR will always be the same. The 200, you can put to any value you want, but this value is very important. So uh, we have to reuse it in a few places and sadly it can't be a variable. There is a few things going behind the scenes in CSS right now that would make this able to be a variable, but for now it cannot be. And the other thing that's important is the gap value that I have right here. Again, this would be cool if we could have it as a variable, we can't for now. And then what we wanna do uh, is we do need, or you can see here I have this container query set up. And I have the container query set up to be looking at sizes that are smaller than 400 pixels plus one rem. The reason I have that, as you can see in the comment that I have here, is I'm, that means I have less than two columns. Because if I have room for two columns, that would be 400 pixels plus the gap down the middle, which I currently have is one rem. So I am doing the size here. Now, if you want and you find it a little bit more readable, you could actually do a 200 times two plus one rem. And because of order of operations, this will happen first, but you could wrap an extra set of parentheses around here. So this is my column size, how many columns I want, and then the gap is right here. And I'd only have one gap when we go up to two columns. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come inside of here and I'm gonna do an ampersand nth child. I'm gonna keep it really simple for now. I'm just gonna put a two. Uh, and we're gonna give this a background color of white. And I'll explain all of this. So by putting the ampersand right here, what we're saying is select only the direct children that are in my grid that are within this container query that's working and that are right now the second child. So it doesn't matter how many columns we have, or it does actually, I shouldn't say that because we're doing that within the container query here. Now, let's say I, I don't want two n. let's say I wanna get the first two elements because uh, the first one would just be a one all the time. So let's say we want always the uh, the first two columns, I should say, not the first two elements. So to start with, what we could do is actually do a negative n plus two. And what this means is the negative n means count backwards. So we're going two, forwards two and then selecting everything that become, comes before that. So I could do this as a three and then it's gonna select the third one and select everything, starting at the third one and then select everything that comes before that. So I'm gonna leave that at two just for now. And then what we could do is come into this next container query that I have set up, where in this case, we have a few different widths that are being looked at. So I have my calc that is set up for 400 pixels plus one rem. So that's the same as what we had here. So in this case, I'm checking, is my width bigger or equal to this? And is it smaller than if it's 600 pixels plus two rem? So the 600 pixels here is if I had three columns, two, four, six, and then two rem because at three columns, we have two gaps. So we have to account for all of those things. And so you can see here, plus the associated gaps is equal to three columns. So now let's copy this, but we need to make a small change to it, but we'll bring it down here. Let's go up to three columns now, or two columns, I should say, where we have this breakpoint. I'm selecting the first one because we're going to the second element. I actually want to go to the fourth element. So no problem, I just make this one four. And now we're going up to the fourth element and counting backwards. So we have this, you can see no matter how many we have there, we can do the same thing here. I'm going between six and 800 pixels plus my gaps. And as I said, it's a little bit annoying to have these container queries. Currently, as far as I can figure out, this is the only way to do it. But again, with modern CSS, uh, there is going to be a new trick for this uh, in the near future. And I'm just gonna come through here, these uh, all really quickly, and I think set them up correctly, <laughs> and plus 10. And that should give us one, two, we always have the first two columns, perfect. But 
What if we don't want the first two columns? We only want, or I'm saying columns, rows, I should be saying. Columns are really easy. Uh, this finished code will be linked in the description and you can click here to get to the columns version. The columns version is super easy. Uh, say I only want the second column. Well, that makes it a, ugh, I said column again, the second row. <laughs> uh, this makes it a little bit trickier. So to do this, we can select ranges of content and this is where this can come in handy. So let's say we only have the one column again right now. So we, we only wanna get this second row and right now we're going to the second one, but we want, we're counting backwards. And I guess actually for this one, we could just say two, right? This one's easy. Uh, we started cheating on that one. Then when we get to here though, we want th this to count backwards, but only if we're starting here. And to do this, it's actually not bad, but we're just gonna combine two selectors together. We're gonna say nth child. This one is going to be my third plus. So I'm gonna do a n plus three. So, there we go. It worked. Good. I had to think about that one for a second. So let's take this one off for a minute and we're going to see how this is working where we're going to the third one. So N plus three. So it's every single element starting at the third one, but then we can combine that. So there's no space between these. If I put a space, that's not going to work. I'm sticking these together to say that it has to meet both of these situations. So it has to, you know, it's, it's starting at the third and going all the way that way, but then going to the fourth one and counting backwards. And then we can do the same thing down here. But on this one, we want to do it. So let's copy this, paste it here. Now it's going to break right now. So we don't want to go to the third one. We want to go to the fourth one. So I just update this to be the four and there we go. And then we can just continue this. This can be my, if we have four columns, that would be my fifth one, I think. <laughs> and then I think this would then go up to my sixth one and hopefully that works properly. There we go. And we always have the second column regardless of how many or how much content there is. And this isn't too tricky. This is sort of the easy bit of doing all of this. Where things get more complicated is if we want to count from the end, because how can we select say the second to last or the last row when we don't know how many rows of content there are? And to do this, I, I want to give major props to a very old article that I found to help me with this, uh, which was here by Keith Clark. This will be linked over in the description, but the, here is the article. So it's from 2013. And I think it was specifically looking at like table layouts or here was ULs. Uh, maybe we're using floats. I'm not 100% sure, but it solved this problem despite this being from 2013. Uh, let's click view the demo. I don't remember how we set it up. I'm just curious now. Uh, so in his demo, here's the code pen. And yeah, okay, so this was set up using flo so a float left with different widths and stuff on it. But the same type of idea works uh, regardless of the situation, which is kind of cool. Uh, just much easier to do this without floats now. So thank you, uh, Keith Clark, for that post that saved me a lot of time in trying to figure this out. And really, it's it's pretty smart how we did it. So instead of using nth child for these combinations, let's go back all the way to the first one because I think it's a little bit easier to understand here. Uh, so in this case, we want to get only the last item. But there's something with this that a lot of people don't seem to realize. I'm going to move my head up here because what we're going to do is instead of an nth child, we're going to say an nth last child. We can go to the end. So now we've selected the second to last child. And if I change this to a three, then it becomes the third to last or the fourth to last child, which can definitely come in handy. Uh, for this case, I only want to get the last row. So I'm going to say I want the last one. And in doing this, you might go, okay, well, when we go up to two columns, now what we could do is actually change this a little bit, right? So I could take this and this is going to be problematic, but it's going to work at first where you could actually say this is going to be two uh, or n plus two. And we're going to our second one and then counting backwards, except ah, this is interesting. Let's go to n plus three here. And so what it's doing is it's actually selecting our third to last one, which is uh, right here. And then when we have that third to last one, because it's n the last child, it's counting backwards. So it's going to that one and then selecting everything before it. And I can switch that over with a negative N here and then it flips it over. So we're going from the third to last and then going to the end. So in this case, we could just do a plus two. And then with that one, you know, it would make sense to then say here, we could come in with a plus three and it, this seems to be working. And this is where I got to on my own. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Uh, where it's always working. <laughs> we, we always have the, the last column. You can see that sort of sneaking out under my head. Uh, except there's a problem is if I come here and I remove a div, it breaks it because <laughs> now the third to last one is over here. And if I take another one off, then it gets even worse potentially because now I'm selecting it starting here and I don't want to do that. So how can we make this actually work? 
So I'm actually gonna change this selector back for, uh, we're gonna need this one, but yeah, we'll get rid of it for now. And so the trick here is to find the div before the last row of content. So in this case, this one is the one before the last row is starting. And we can always get the one before the last row starts because it's always gonna be in the same spot, basically. Uh, so to be able to do that, here we have our nth last child. Uh, we're gonna, as I said, we'll switch this over for an nth child. And for now, I'm gonna do a three N. And that's because I know I have three columns. So I'm selecting all the ones that are lining up here. But I also wanna make sure that I'm only getting the last one here out of all of them. So just for now, so we can see this overlap because this part's kind of weird. What I'm gonna do is come in with a different selector and then we're gonna combine them together. So here I'm gonna say an nth child. And we're gonna say, or actually for this one, I want an nth last child, not, so there we go, nth last child. And I'm gonna say we want n, uh, negative n, because we wanna count backwards like before, plus four. And let's do this as a, uh, we'll give it an outline of three pixels solid or dotted, let's say dotted hot pink. And let's do an outline offset just to make it a bit more clear of three pixels. And now we can see that what we're doing is we're selecting the last four elements that are coming here. So one, two, three, four. Uh, but that means this one, we have this overlap that's on those, right? So let's just say we added another div now, copy this, paste it in. Now we still have that overlap. We've shifted it over, but we still have that overlap and we're still selecting this one right here. And then let's copy this and paste it one more time. So if we end up with more of them, now we still get that overlap. So we have this overlap all the time of this element with the white and the dotted lines that we have right now. So that means if I take this here, I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste it right here, attached. We can now see that we're getting these two being selected because they're getting the white on there. Now the last one here doesn't really matter too much. What matters is the first one out of all of these that's being selected. And once again, let's take one off just to see that these last two, will, or this one will be the white one now. Uh, and if we added or removed another one, it would still be white. And this is the important one. The one that is currently white is the important one right there. And so let's take this outline off because we don't need it anymore. And what I wanna do now though, is I don't wanna select always this element. I wanna select every element that comes after it. And all to do that, we come here, we do a tilde, which is the squiggly thing and a star. And as soon as I do that, we've selected every element after that one there. I guess I should have left the outline there, but <laughs> every element after this one here. And so if I take another div away, then it's still going to be the last row. Or if I add more divs in, it's always going to select the last row there. And then we just have to rely on these container queries to, to be able to do this. So I'm gonna select this selector here again. I'm gonna paste it down here for when we have four columns. And that means I want four and plus five uh, I said four and I put a three. So I want four plus five. And then this next one becomes a five for five columns plus six. Cause we always want to go, the plus six is just think of it. We're going like one extra backwards. And now, so we have the last row here. Then we get the last row here. We get the last row and the last row. And it doesn't matter how many elements we have, it's always going to work. And as we can see, that's working in every situation. And then you could also manipulate this in different ways to get the second to last row or the third to last row, or whatever you want. There is more that we could do with this, but this is a little bit annoying that we have to rejig it every time within these container queries. And as I said, there is a way to do this with modern CSS, which is absolutely incredible. And I did not come up with this on my own. This one was by Tamani Afif, who forked my pen, I think, and, and made, uh, this version of it, you can see it's still working. In this case, we're only looking at the last one, but again, this can be modified in other ways. Uh, there's a few things he did here was he registered the custom properties. Uh, I don't know if we need to do that, but he did register each one of them. And then he used these custom properties in an interesting way. And there's only one really weird thing that we're gonna see here, which is these 10 A10s coming in with one rem, one pixel. Uh, the reason here is this G is our gap. And so the gap is set to one rem. So the A10 tan thing is to strip the units away. So we're just left with this as like the, the computed value. So we're basically getting this from what I understand is 16 pixels, but we're getting it as like 16. Uh, and then the same thing here, it's doing it with the container query minus the one rem uh, here with our the gap value coming in to make these calculations work and everything else because of the way the divisions and things would work. Here we're dividing it by the unitless value uh, of what we needed. 
So it looks a little bit more confusing with the tan a tan things coming in here, uh, but it's not so bad. <laughs> the really cool part of it here is he's using a round and the best is the sibling count. So a sibling count where it actually knows how many siblings there are. And the sibling index here knows the value within you know, the index of that starting at one. So we're doing it, it is CSS. So the indexes start at one and not zero. Uh, and then he's finally setting the color here using an if statement. <laughs> so this is all really cool. This all works currently in Chromium. I'm not even in Canary or anything. Uh, and hopefully we'll start working elsewhere. So we're saying, if the i, which we're getting through this math right here, uh, is uh, one, we're gonna get red, and else it's dodger blue. So the i is if it's in the last row, uh, just based on its index and how much other stuff is going on. And you can see it works magically, and we don't need media queries or container queries or anything else. Uh, and it does take a little bit of work to get there and can be quite confusing to look at. It took me a little while to wrap my mind around. Uh, to get it, but if you take away the tan A10s, it starts making a little bit more sense. Uh, so if you want to poke around in this, this will also be linked down in the description below. If you're watching this and even through all of this, you're a little bit confused by the container queries and you'd like to learn more about them, I have a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome, Johnny, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.